welcome back to Knowledge Resources Speaker Feature. Today, we're sitting down with Sheila Goodwin, who will be speaking at the HR Business Partner Conference on the 6th and 7th of April. You may know Sheila as the Head of HR for Media24. We are so excited to have her here today. Sheila, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Amy. Lovely to be here. So you've had a rare experience, Sheila. You've been with Media24 for quite a number of years now, and you've had an opportunity to really see them grow and change and develop. What do you think the experience of being with a company for and really investing in their growth, what has that taught you about being an HR business partner? Wow. Um, you know, it's a lot like gardening. <laughs> I, I'm quite an avid gardener, not a very good one, but I do enjoy it. And one of the things about gardening is that you plant the seeds and you water and you get the sun and Hopefully it turns into something beautiful, but you have to be patient and it takes time. And uh, what we're seeing now at Media24 is the fruits of having invested over many years in developing leaders, in developing digital skills, in developing people and building engagement. And um, you can't always see the results right away. You know, it doesn't always happen when you want it to happen, but it's important to have a vision of where you want to go. And it's important to have the patience and the tenacity to stick to it. But I'm interested to know, there's a big trend in millennials currently where I think they only stay at one job for about four years before switching. How detrimental do you think that is? Is that a positive or a negative? What do you think the lasting effects will be? Um, look, I think people certainly do stay in jobs for shorter times now than was the trend maybe many years ago. But hell, you know, I joined this company nearly 30 years ago. And when I joined, I was straight out of university and I fully expected to get two years of experience and then move on to something else. That was totally my plan. Um, it didn't work out that way because every time my two years kind of got to an end, there was a new opportunity and there was something exciting to do. So I think as far as moving on to other jobs after four years, um, it's great. It's great to build other experience. It's great to go to other places and to build your career. Um, but I think it puts the pressure on companies to say, well, if we want to keep you for longer, what do we have to offer? Where's the growth path? Where's the opportunity to get ahead? Um, and where is that opportunity that you have to grow? And there's a huge benefit, I think, to being able to keep people for longer than the four years if you can. But it's not always the right thing. And that's fine, too. Uh, what I quite like in, in our company is I present an induction course each month for our new joiners. And like clockwork, in every induction class, at least 20% of the people are people who are coming back. They worked for us before. They went off to work somewhere else. And now they're coming back to Media24. And I love that, too. You know, it tells me that they've spread their wings. They've got more experience. But they loved us enough to want to come back. What a great testament for this company culture and how you guys are going forward. I'd like to ask you a little bit about that, especially concerning the digital practice and how everything is moving towards that area now at higher speeds because of the pandemic. What are the challenges you've seen and the implications for HR as an industry? Hmm. So um, I suppose we've been on the digital path for, for a long time now. Um, News 24 was born in 1998, you know? So we've been a, a business with an online presence for a long time. And we've thought about doing things digitally for a long time as well. Um, and I suppose the, the, the thing that works is it's gotta be part of how you do business. It can't be seen as a project that happens on the side. Um, you can't see digitization as something outside of your core business. It's just how we do things now. Um, and I think that accelerated for a lot of us when we found ourselves working from home and suddenly Teams and Zoom and video calling was how we got things done. Um, and that maybe pushed some people into using technology more than they would have before. But it's really just a continuation of a trend that, that we'd all been on. So I don't think it was fundamentally new. But if you want this to work, it can't be seen as um, we are now digitizing and there is a special team sitting in a dark corner somewhere who's going to manage our digitization project for us if everybody isn't thinking of working in this new way it's not going to happen well you'll be speaking about leading a hybrid team at the conference and we're looking forward to that a lot i'd like to ask you about how your leadership style in this sense has it changed when you started leading a hybrid team or do you think the core remained the same um 
I've actually learned so much about leadership from my colleagues, especially in the last two years, um, from working with everybody remotely to working now in a situation that is more hybrid. And one of the most important things that I've learned is that it's all about inclusion. It's really all about inclusion. And that's what I'll be talking about at the conference as well. Um, being in a hybrid environment adds another dimension of diversity to your team. You have some people physically with you in the same space. You have some people who are joining remotely. And we've always had that to some extent. You know, we've got offices in different cities and people have had telephone conferences and video conferences. But I think we've underestimated how very alienating and excluding it can be to be the person on the phone or the person on the call while everybody else is in the room and how difficult it can be to really feel part of that team and to really make your contribution. So focusing on inclusion, focusing on what do you need as a leader to deliberately do to build inclusion and to let everybody feel safe in the space, let everybody contribute is fundamentally important. Um, so what we found, and, and I learned this more from my colleagues actually than from my own cleverness, I have to say, is that you have to spend more time on the people stuff. You have to spend more time on the non-work stuff you have to spend more time getting to know each other, sharing with each other what's going on personally, you know, how's your maize plant coming along, you know, <laughs> you planted it two weeks ago, is it sprouting yet? How are the kids doing, you know, show us your cat, how's your cat looking today? Um, it's all that stuff and when people can share how it's going with them personally, the good and the bad, and there's been plenty of bad in the last two years as well, people have gone through a lot. Um, it's only when you can have that safe space to share that in your team that you can feel close enough to feel included. And um, I think without that, it's incredibly hard to make hybrid work well. Is that one of the aspects you would include in managing culture as well as just being very intentional about reaching out to your employees? Definitely. You know, I think intentional is a good way of putting it, Amy. Um, reaching out to people because it doesn't just come by itself. Culture is always something that needs to be managed, but we have to manage it so much more deliberately when we are working with people in a hybrid environment where we're not seeing them all face to face. I think particularly of new staff who are joining in a world where they probably haven't met most of their colleagues face to face. And just imagine you start a new job, you're in a new company, you don't know these people, suddenly you have a job to perform, you don't know how you're doing, you don't know who you can talk to if there's a problem, you don't know who's got a weird sense of humor and who's just making a joke when they said this, all those kinds of things. It's incredibly hard for new people. And to maintain your culture and to make sure that new people also feel what your culture is about, really, really difficult if you don't put very specific um, plans and activities in place to bring people together, to let them share, whether virtually, whether online, whether in person. But if you don't do it, it's not going to happen by itself. You really have to plan for it. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing about the practicalities of this as well at the conference in your presentation and just how we can approach it better and more inclusivity and, the, as I said, the practicalities of approaching that. I'd like to ask you as a closing question, what are you looking forward to at the HR Business Conference? Oh, well, you know, it's one of my favorite conferences of the year, the, the HR Business Partner Conference, because it's about um, bringing professionals together in a way where you can share concerns, share issues. I always find that I learn a lot from the speakers, but I learn just as much from the questions um, and listening to what the, the audience comes up with, with their questions, their engagement. Um, it's, it's something that I've come to appreciate much more, actually, now that we are mostly in a virtual world. Um, then back in the days where you could actually go into the conference hall, you could go into the Cape Town Convention Center and stand there with your cup of coffee and chat to somebody that you'd never met before. Um, we kind of could, took it for granted then. I definitely don't know. And I, I really appreciate that opportunity to network and to learn from other people. Amazing. Well, we're looking forward to it, Sheila. And you can sign up to the conference by using the link in the description. Join us for a day of insight and, as Sheila said, networking and collaboration. Thank you for joining us today, Sheila. Lovely. We'll see you there.